Hi everyone, I'm here with Jocelyn Lillianor, who is a mindset coach and a sports coach. Mindset and performance coach for mindset equestrians. Mindset and performance coach for equestrians. Uh, we're very excited to have her um, here today. We're actually going to have a session. So you guys are going to basically be sitting in on one of our sessions, <laughs> um, which I don't know if I'll be crying by the end. I'm pulling my hair out. I don't know how it's going to go. <laughs> but um, I'm going to try and be as like raw and honest as possible. I feel like I never really talk about these kind of things. I try and always stay very positive and lighthearted online. So we might, this might be like news <laughs> to some of you. Um, but yeah, maybe you could just introduce what you do a little bit and kind of like, yeah, yeah your space. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a mindset and performance coach for equestrians. Um, I am a competitive rider myself. I ride eventing, show jumping. I have three horses at the moment that I compete myself. Um, I train, uh, I coach riders obviously in the mental side. So I have riders that I coach one-on-one. -on -one. I also have a group coaching program. Yeah. I have a podcast. So just trying to reach as many Busy. riders as possible. Busy. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And combining that with my own horses and, and obviously competing like as far as I can myself with my own horses. Yeah. And I think this is such a great topic. And I think I already told you, and I, it's not something I've really talked about before, but I've had therapy for a long time. I was doing like two sessions a week. Now I've cut it back to one session a week because I got my life in order. Um, <laughs> but I think it's so important for anyone. You don't have to be struggling to talk to someone. It's not like you have to reach rock bottom and then you reach out. I think it's yeah. so important to have people in your life that can kind of guide you through it. There's a lot that happens in life and sometimes we don't have all the tools. Mm -hmm. So it is important to do things like this. Yeah. So I'm very excited uh, to be doing it today with you. Yeah. Um, I don't know where we're gonna go with it. I see you've got like paper, you've got a, <coughs> you've got a pad. Um, so <laughs> I, I don't know everything. where we're going, but we're going somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna kind of let you take the reins. Yeah. Cause I don't, I also don't really have like, I've got a lot of things in my mind that I know we could go, mm -hmm. but I'm going to see where you take me and we'll kind of go from there. I'll just be like a client. I love yeah. it. Let's just dive in. Okay. So, so Matt, why don't you tell me where are you at in your riding right now? Okay. Just the riding? Uh, or like we, can, my... we can start with that. You can tell me whatever you want to tell me. <laughs> okay. Whatever pops up is supposed to come up. Yeah. Okay. So I guess let's do, let's do a big umbrella. So basically what I do is I work online. Mm -hmm. um, I share my life online and my riding online. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something I've been doing for like eight years as kind of work, let's yeah. say. Um, and with my riding, I have a couple of horses. So I love PRE horses and I love dressage. Mm -hmm. And I just started competing pre St. George with one of my uh, stallions, Emporio. So that's been like a whole new journey and kind of new thing for me. That's been really exciting. Awesome. That's like a very brief, no, that's <laughs> condensed awesome. that's version awesome. of everything. No, amazing. And, yeah. uh, and what kind of goals have you got in your riding? Um, with Emporio, I definitely want to go International Grand Prix. That's mm -hmm. something that is like a very ambitious and big goal. Mm -hmm. um, like I don't need to go to the Olympics or something, but I want to do, I definitely want to do like the best I can with my horse, but I want to do it in like a way that's fun. Yeah. Uh, and in a way that we can both sustain it and enjoy it. Like I don't want to be every weekend out at a competition and like really having to like push and push and push my horse. Um, I don't have to like qualify for like mm -hmm. anything really. Like mm -hmm. I'm just doing it for fun. So I kind of want to get a taste of it and then see kind of how I want to go from there. Yeah. Love it. And do you feel like got any like challenges in your riding right now? I think, I think the riding is pretty good. I think a lot of times I put a lot of pressure on myself because, and this, and I, and I, I think this is why I haven't talked about it before is I don't want to like sound arrogant, but, um, when I used to compete when I was younger, no one knew who I was. So mm -hmm. I could just go to a competition and I was just a regular competitor. And no one was like turning an extra eye or like, you know, coming in with like preconceived notions or yeah. judgments and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And now I definitely feel more pressure because when I go to a show, um, this is the bit that I hate to say, but I know that people know who I am. I know. <laughs> and so there's just like, it's like they know me, I don't know them. And I feel like social media sets an expectation in a bar. And so I constantly feel like I have to achieve what I put out on social media. And what I put out on social media is true. I share the good and the bad. But, you know, you, when you see the nice photos and stuff like that, like I never want to disappoint people in real life. Mm -hmm. So I feel an enormous pressure to uphold that standard that I've set for myself. Yeah. 
I, I'm, I'm sort of half smiling when you're telling this because I can so relate to what you're saying. Yeah. Because obviously you got a way bigger following than I do, but also I, like I have the podcast and yeah. it is a, is it is a, an added level of pressure. Yeah. It's like you know that people are watching you, and for me maybe not so much like the level of writing I'm writing, but it's like. I'm a mindset coach. I'm supposed to have it all together. And yeah. then you get out there and then you sort of have to show to people what, like you say, what you put on social media. Yeah. And, and you know, everything with social media, it's like we show the, the good parts sort of thing. And, and yeah, I think you try and be positive. Mm -hmm. And I get a lot of comments from people like, oh, like, you know, I don't really identify as the word influencer because I think I do a lot of other stuff as yeah. well. But like as an internet personality, you always want to try and share like the good and the positive. Yeah. And you get a lot of comments of people saying, you know, people like you are setting an unrealistic yeah. expectation of what life is. But then on the same hand, as soon as I share something raw and honest, mm. you get slammed. Mm. It's like, oh, it doesn't look good. Or you shouldn't be writing like that. And it's like, you know, some days the writing doesn't look great or perfect mm. or pretty. Um, I mean, I always tr strive for the best welfare wise for my horses, but I feel like social media wants you to make, make, make mistakes and be honest, but when you do, you get like slammed for it. So mm -hmm. it's like a, it's like a very difficult give and take kind of situation. It's, it's a balance yeah. to be strong. Just quick guys, are you enjoying this kind of content here on my YouTube channel? Then head over to Horse World TV where you can see videos like this um, with uploads every single week. Plus, if you become a member, there are hundreds of videos covering a variety of different horse topics, disciplines, lessons, all that kind of stuff that you can check out straight away. So if you become a member there, instant access and you can view everything. We'll see you there. So like, what have you tried so far when you're working with this in your writing? I have tried, I've talked about it to my therapist as mm -hmm. well. Um, and she tells me just to like really hone in on that feeling of like what started it for me, like what like what makes me passionate, what, what makes me want to be out there. Mm -hmm. um, and then we always run through like, she'll be like, oh, so if, if it goes bad, then what? Yeah. Like what, what's going to happen? Like what, like take me through your thoughts and like, what's the worst like that could possibly be? Yeah. And then that kind of grounds me again mm -hmm. and makes me realize a little bit that like you build it up worse in your head yeah. than what it truly actually is. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. That's why I tell my own clients a lot of time as well. Like what is the, actually the worst that can happen? Yeah. Because a lot of the time we build up those like imaginary fears in our head. It's yeah. Like our, our like the, the human nature, right? We tend to take in worst case scenarios. And back yeah. in the days, the worst case scenario was that a tiger would jump out the bushes kind of thing. Yeah. And nowadays we have the same fear response. But really, in reality, there are no tigers jumping out. No, you're... no. Well, yeah. But couple, hopefully maybe, not. <laughs> I was thinking there's a couple of journalists that are like tigers, <laughs> but aside from that, yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like it's, I think everyone can resonate to this feeling on some level. Mm -hmm. Because even like if you're going to a show and you know a couple of riders or you've got a few friends that are going to be there, like, you know, you want to put your best foot forward. Of course. Uh, and that's not always going to going to going to happen. Mm -hmm. But how, how would you what would be your tips on like navigating that feeling of pressure or having to deliver or having to be successful? Mm -hmm. I, I first of all, I always say like pressure <coughs> is something that you create in your mind. Like pressure is not real. You yeah. can't touch it. It's not a real thing. You only create it in your own mind. Yeah. And something that you said is like, I have to like you, you use the word have to a word have to or I must do that. Those yeah. are kind of words that tend to create a lot of pressure and you're creating that by yourself, right? So I, what I always tell people is like, what you, words could you use instead? Yeah. That would like limit the pressure that you're putting on. Yeah, yourself. that's true. Yeah. So I guess I could say, um, like, I guess the sentence would be like, I have to do well. Mm -hmm. I would like to do well. I would like to do well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would like to do well, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah. If I don't. Yeah. No, yeah. that's true. And I guess another aspect for me is like, I think, um, there's a lot of criticism. Like, I think I've had it pretty good, but it's been like eight years of like people criticizing my life every day. Mm -hmm. And so like, it can get very tiring as well. And you can't, I can never please anyone. Like mm -hmm. sometimes I'll post like a video of like my stallions being out in the fields, like next to each other. And I'll get like DMs of people like, how cruel that you don't keep your stallions with other horses. And mm -hmm. it's like, you just can't win. Like you just can't do it all. And so sometimes uh, I need to, I struggle with understanding like where I don't like that, that I don't have to please everyone, like that it's mm -hmm. not my job to make sure that everybody agrees with me, likes mm -hmm. me or that is seeing eye to eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's something that I struggle with quite a lot. 
mm. sometimes because I just want to I know what I'm doing is good and I know that I'm doing right by my horses mm. so when someone disagrees it it touches me like in a deeper place and I just want to shake them and be like but I knew I'm good for them like you have no idea how much I do for my horses yeah like I have to prove myself yeah yeah that's a big one proving myself yeah can I be uh, can I be like hard on you yeah or, or like can I be can yeah, I call yeah, you yeah. out a little bit yeah. Is that alright? Um, but I always say, the reason why we care about what people say is because there tends to be an underlying insecurity. Probably. Underneath. Probably, yeah. It's like, I always take this example, like, what if someone would walk up to you and say, oh, you have so ugly purple hair? Yeah. Would that touch you? That wouldn't. Why not? Because I think, I think I'm quite confident. I modeled for like a lot of yeah. years mm -hmm. and I don't think like I'm a good looking person or I'm better than someone else, but I'm very secure in the way I look oh, there you go. in the sense that like, like I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Not that like I think I'm like the best in the world, but I'm really happy with that. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think horses touch me in a different way because like, I feel like a great deal of like responsibility towards them mm -hmm. and i'm really really proud of like how i handle that like i couldn't give it i'm not like proud of my hair like mm -hmm. you know like i don't really care it's not that deep but it is really deep for me about my horses i think it like gets me in like a different more like sensitive th uh state and i'm i'm also the kind of person like i'm not i don't shy away from confrontation mm -hmm. i can say no i have like really clear set boundaries so i don't really struggle with that that much it's more i guess i have like a big my therapist calls it like a big like demanding parent voice in my head mm -hmm. and I'm a perfectionist as well so I'm very self-critical and I and I just want to be the best so that's that's also an area I feel like you're yeah like, I'm like I'm on fire like, like there's problem. so much problem problem you're like a dream client like it's like yeah. sometimes I talk to people and they would just be like I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know. I'll get the answer. I don't know. But you were yeah. so open and like telling me what's actually. Well, going I think on. at the beginning I didn't know, but I, I have been on a long journey of self discovery. Yeah. And I think I have identified certain things within myself. I'm yeah. very reflective on like, especially after my sessions, I'm driving home and I'm like overloaded just thinking about everything we chatted about. Yeah. So yeah, I'm open minded to yeah. it. You, you can tell you've done a lot, a lot of reflection on yourself and yeah. <laughs> you've probably gotten like similar. You know, you already know, I always say, first you need to find out what the problem is. Before you can fix the problem, you need to first like call out what the problem is. You know? yeah. And you already know what the problem is. Like you already know what, the, what your challenges are. Um, but like to go back to that, like insecurity you were talking about, like like you say, the reason why you don't care about if someone would comment on your hair is because you you feel confident about your hair already. Yeah. You know you're freaking good looking. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> no, yeah. well, I wouldn't say that, but I'm, I'm happy with it yeah, i'm happy well, with well, myself there, well there you go and why yeah. do you think it is that it touches you and it gets to you if people were to comment about your horses or your riding i think because like i think beauty is objective mm -hmm. so i think that can be seen in one way or another but i don't think like how you treat your horses is, is an objective thing mm -hmm. i think like there are set unspoken rules or real rules mm -hmm. that really identify whether you're being good or bad to your horses like and and that's like a fact like mm -hmm. that's like a non-disputable thing so mm -hmm. when people try and like mess with my like my, like my sense of reality because mm -hmm. like my sense of reality is like look my horses look good they're healthy mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. you know maybe i share a photo sometimes and people are like oh your horses are so fat they're so unhealthy and i'm like i have a nutritionist i know exactly how much they weigh like i know for a fact that they're not like an unhealthy weight mm -hmm. but so then it bothers me because I'm like, we're, you're, we're messing with reality now. Like you're, it's a blatant lie. Whether mm -hmm. if it's just someone's opinion, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, that's their, like, that's their, that's what they think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But do you think that there, and this is just like, I'm just a pure question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do you think that there is a part of you that are insecure about the way you like, you treat your horses or that you're doing it right? Or am I doing it I like, am I I'm good me. enough in, in what I'm doing? I think I'll always challenge because I want to do better by them. I think I'll always challenge if there's a better way. Yeah. Like if I can do it better, yeah. if there's anything else I can do. Yeah. And I think as ride is at least I'll speak for myself. There's a lot of guilt like have i done enough like can i yep. do something better can do we need to like whatever you know you mm -hmm. always try and look for more that's why we have all these crazy like no they're, they're crazy because i do them too but yep. animal communicators with therapists yep. and we've got massage people people that come for the lasers like all mm -hmm. these different things because you just are always questioning is there more that i can do and yep. i think it's because they can't talk to you no. so you just got to kind of like 
kind of stumble your way through it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, who's to say what's right or wrong? Yeah. I always say that labeling of like what's right or wrong, I, I just think it's like a way of doing things. Yeah. It's like you treat your horse in a certain way, which might be right for your horse, and someone else will treat them, their horse in another way. It's not yeah. right or wrong. I think always when we like assign a label of right or wrong to things, Yeah. that's when we also create that thing of judgment. If there were no right or wrong, then we also can't judge whether it's right or wrong. Yeah, no, that's true, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I think on a coping mechanism way, like at least I'll tell you how I've handled yeah. it for that. I want to hear if you think it's a healthy no, way. No, tell me, yeah. Um, but for instance, if I get criticism, like I'm very open, like that I say that like Instagram is a space that I created and it's community that like, it's not a public forum. Mm -hmm. It's like really my life. So if I have people that come on there and blatantly are just being rude or like critical in like a rude way, like I block. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like that's like a really simple thing that I do. And it's something I've done with friendships in the past as well. Like if there's like a point of no return with me, like I'm very mm -hmm. tolerant and I'm very understanding, but there's like a boundary. And yeah. if people cross that boundary, I will, I will like, you'll, I'll walk out of your life and you'll never hear from me again, mm -hmm. never. Mm -hmm. So I have that approach also with my followers. So I have like thousands of people blocked because if somebody just co posts on my, like comments on my things and said Rolka mm. and there's no Rolka happening, mm. like I'm just going to block you because mm. like there's no way that you and I are going to coexist in the same world peacefully. Mm. So that's this week's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, then become a member where you can watch hundreds of videos like this, all horse related content, different disciplines, topics, and they're all right there for you to access straight away. So become a member and get full access to the content right now.